Beloved ones, church family, members of the community, those I have never met, I am so glad that you have joined us for this time together this morning. Whether you are in your living room or in your bedroom or somewhere else, you are welcome here. Whether you are in your jammies or your street clothes or something else, you are welcome here. Whether you are anxious to get back to the sanctuary, or perfectly content worshiping in your home, you are welcome here. Whether you're feeling calm or anxious or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. Whether you have joined us many times or this is your very first, you are welcome here.
When we accept the non-utilitarian goodness of life, a world that doesn't need a why, we tune into the raw delight in the world. Beauty decenters our ego by helping us realize that life is its own justification. As we let go of how everything relates to us, serves us, benefits us, we begin to appreciate all things for their own worth and beauty, and our desire for their flourishing intensifies. When we turn this idea onto our own selves, we can let go of the expectations of others and the societal standards of beauty in regard to our own worth. In our search for beauty today, I have a question for you. What is shiny and reflects one of the most beautiful things on earth when you look into it? Can you guess? Okay, just in case you need another clue, I have one for you. If you want to see if you have something in your teeth, what do you look in? Of course, a mirror. Go ahead and see if you can find a mirror nearby um, or see one from where you are sitting. I have one right here. And whoa, look at that. I can see myself in the mirror. Can you see me in yours? You can't? I can see me. Why can't you see me? Oh, that's right, because a mirror shows us ourselves. You see you and I see me. Okay, I get it. That is really good that you can see yourself in the mirror. Because today we are going to read a scripture that is a little bit like a love letter from God. It says, look at how beautiful you are. This is sometimes really hard to believe. And I can tell you kiddos who are watching that a lot of adults have a hard time believing it too, but it's true. You can also trust that no matter how unique or different you are from anyone else, you are exactly who you are supposed to be and God calls you beautiful. 
You don't have to try to be beautiful. You just are, period. No questions asked. So this week, I invite you to get permission if you are one of our younger disciples, <coughs> excuse me, and some help from an adult to make a big heart on your bathroom mirror, right where you see your face. You can use a dry erase marker. Um, you could use chapstick or lipstick. Um, if you are a child living in a home, please get an adult permission first before you go drawing on your mirror. But I invite you to draw a big heart right where your face would be in the middle. And every time you brush your teeth or wash your hands, which I know you are probably doing a lot, look at your face inside the heart and know that this is how God feels about you. This is how you are meant to be loved as part of the beauty and the creation. And guess what? Everyone and everything is beautiful all on its own as well. So we can imagine a heart around the faces of everyone that we see. Let's pray a repeat after me prayer. God of goodness, thank you for creating us, for making us beautiful and loved. Help me help you let others know they are beautiful and loved too. For the beauty of the earth. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Song of Songs, also called the Song of Solomon. And it is biblical poetry at its most blush. In this book, adoration is an adoration for another is full of metaphors from nature. The voice is like the coo of a dove. The curve of the landscape is seen as the curve of the body. Perhaps the hills and mountains are the curve of the beloved creator and our bodies are to be seen as the beautiful handiwork of the same artisan of life. In this passage for today, the culminating conclusion is that there is no flaw in the utter beauty of the subject of adoration. This does not mean that perfection is the goal, but that there is no flaw in imperfection. And the beauty of the one beheld is not dependent on the judgment of the beholder. Let us enter this Lectio Divina allowing judgment to suspend, to lift, to dissipate, so that we may adore all things, even ourselves, as the dearest to whom this letter is addressed. Look at you, so beautiful, my dearest. Look at you, so beautiful. Look at your eyes, sweet as doves, behind the veil that your hair makes as it cascades from your head like a flock of young goats, black ones bounding down off Mount Gilead. And your teeth are sheep, white as the day they were born, were newly shorn and freshly washed each with its perfect mate. Not one of them is alone. Why should we be? And ah, the lips of that lovely mouth, a ribbon of scarlet. Your temples behind that veil glow like the halves of a freshly sliced pomegranate. Your neck has the grace of David's tower with its jewels hung round it like the shields of a thousand warriors your breasts, like the twin fawns of a gazelle hiding among the lilies. All my nights, till the sun comes chasing its shadows, let me play in these perfumed hills, 
these mountains scented with myrrh. You are utterly beautiful, my dearest. Not a single flaw in you. Today's message is a video called Seeing Differently. Artist and teacher Lanisha Rouse Tinsley will talk about how experiencing beauty and delight can nurture hope and why art and creativity can help make another world possible. Body. Uh, but for me, it's, it helps me navigate through the real kind of ditches and holes that life just has. Like it's all a part of life, right? And I think um, if we just have suffering, um, if we just encounter ugliness and hopefulness, then we're not really truly ex experiencing all that there is. Um, for the journey, right? There is more. There is more. Really good news. <laughs> that is really good news, that there is more, and it's a both and, right? And so I think um, the more I delight and encounter beauty and what's possible um, from us, the best of us coming out, and um, my imagination is often sparked by beautiful things. Um, then when I encounter, it also makes me more attentive to the places of real suffering and um, identify things that are ugly, like injustices and um, places that are just like, that is not giving life, right? Like, What does art have to do with justice? What does art have to do with justice? Um, well, art in this way of creativity, right? Um, I think we have, many of us have inherited, been born into stories that are um, in great need of imagination and creativity if we are going to have a good world um, to help make this world good for all people and not just for some. Um, and we've created kind of this mess of things and it's going to take a lot of creativity and imagination. Um, as my friend Shane says, you know, to see that another world is possible, right? And to not only see it, but do the work to make it possible. Um, as somebody said, you know, like if you can imagine it, then you can create it, you know? And so I think art, um, and art in its like purest form um, shows us what's possible and even the art making process for me is a way of working out these muscles of problem solving and pushing limits and boundaries and realizing what is capable for me when I look at a blank canvas and then all of a sudden after hours or sometimes months it's become something it's like whoa that came from me <laughs> um, I can do that and so man what could I do if I really started thinking about um, some of these laws and some of the imaginary social constructs that hinder 
people from progressing and what are ways that even my artwork, not only my words and my writing and my living and my voting can do this, but how can my work help people to see themselves and other people differently? And I think the church um, has language for that. Um, that we don't quite use all the time and sometimes it falls short. (laughs) Um, But I think this idea of when we really follow Jesus, we are given new eyes. Um, We can be given new eyes, right? Um, To see ourselves and see other people differently. Uh, I think when we allow ourselves to be broken open by love, um, and that comes in a number of different ways, that, that changes us, and that changes the way we see things um, when we move in the world. And so I think the church can teach us um, how to see differently when we're at our best, I think. We can help us see differently ourselves and the world around us, and in that seeing, live differently. Um, where the words that we, these ancient words that we claim to shape our lives are not just words on the pages, but they're living words um, in our life. And um, yeah, I just can't, I can't imagine um, a world where we're doing that, where creativity is not a part of it. Um, Yeah. this series, we have been looking around to more deeply notice the fullness of life, its joys and its sorrows, its poignant and mundane moments, its little victories of immense tragedy. And we are coming to know greater compassion by coming to care more deeply as we contemplate with more intention and awareness. Today, we acknowledge the pain of judgment that comes with captivity to expectations that do not come from God, but from others and even ourselves. We hold to standards that are ultimately not what true beauty or a beautiful life is about. In this time of prayer, I invite you to open your hands upward on your lap and allow these expectations to lift. Feel the heaviness of measuring up drift away from you, replacing compassion for yourself and by extension for others. tired and feel you can't get through uncertainty comes over you just look around when your problems seem too much to bear unsure if there's someone who cares just look around Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend On each other in tough times we can depend Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it might seem like forever Look around, even if darkest night things are gonna be all right we'll get through this together just look around holy one we wonder about you We look around us at the mighty power and majesty of nature, and it is easy for us to sing songs of praise for your creation. 
Then we look at the ways in which people treat one another. Too often, lying and cheating are touted as the ways in which we should live. We see deceit and anger, hostility and hatred, and we wonder where the visions of the angels descending and ascending are today. We long for times of peace and joy, yet are drawn into the horrors of the world. Be with us, Lord. Help us see and feel your presence in our lives. Help us place our trust in you. For there is much work to be done in your world, and you have called us to do this work. Guide our steps and guard our lives. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life's full of possibilities So look around Each new day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretched storms and many helping hands don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans. Look around. Kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever. Look around. For even in our darkest night, things are gonna be all right. We'll get through. Just look around, look around, just look around. As the song says, we'll get through this together with outstretched arms and many helping hands. One way we show our compassion is to offer what we can, reconfirming our dedication to making the world a more beautiful experience for all. If you are in a position to make a monetary donation to the church, the online giving link will be in the comments. Many of you continue to donate food that helps keep our food pantry stocked here at the church. It also helps feed the children of three families here in town for the summer months as a, an extension of our SYNC program. And it also helps the Friendly Hands Food Bank in Torrington meet their ever-growing demand for food for those who are experiencing food insecurity. Thank you in advance for all that you do. Another way we can work to make this world a more beautiful experience for all is to continue learning and growing as people made in God's image. Beginning this Thursday and then every other Thursday, I will be co-facilitating a series called Race and Racism, Let's Talk. Our first session will be called Racism 101 and is geared towards those who haven't taken part in our White Privilege Let's Talk series or who are new to growing in this way. That being said, all are welcome. I will be posting the link to register for this series. Um, you can register for one, um, you can register for all. It's not a, you must commit to attending each one that is offered. But I will post the link to register 
on my Facebook page, on the church's Facebook page, and I will also include it in an e-blast that will go out either this afternoon with today's worship service or on Tuesday. I strongly encourage you all to take the small step and be open to the possibility that there is more to know. As a sign of solidarity, let's say our common commission together. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found, and may the goodness of the Creator and the companionship of Christ and the insight of the Holy Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Thank you.